I, I have a question in regards to the announcement, because I mean, you announced that you were making this back in 2011, right? Uh, it was announced. Yeah, yeah. What took that amount of time, six years, to be able to get it to... to, uh, to I, I think the shortest answer is, is that the network that we were on ceased to exist, and the new oh, network okay. became Freeform, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. there's a part where things get held in... Uh, uh, cloak and dagger land, sure. so they can come out and play. Sure. So it had nothing to do with story or plot. You guys no, no, no. I, it, Joe Pekaski was our okay. was our showrunner. Yeah. Uh, the good news was that Joe had the opportunity to then go and make Underground, uh, which I think really helped him make this show as well. Right. Um, follow up would be so. Where does this all kind of tie in in regards to the television universe? I know. Um, so you're trying to get me in trouble and have me go, yes, it's all connected. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, look, the, I, I think everyone knows that our our characters all exist within the MCU, uh, which is a world that has, you know, both uh, Matt Murdock as, as Daredevil and has Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and has now our, our newest show, uh, Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. Um, it's a show that takes place in New Orleans, uh, which is a character of its own right in the show. Um, but as you can probably tell, there's not a whole lot of superhero activity in New Orleans. So there might be a mention of something. I think some people have already caught on to some of the imagery that we've used and have said, oh, that's in that, and so that's part of that. Um, and so that's how it all comes together. That, it doesn't mean that... Uh, Jessica Jones is suddenly going to come crashing through a wall as though that was something she'd ever do anyway. Um, and what it means is, is that we all live in the same world, and yeah. it, it's a world that's made better by these two young heroes who are first trying to figure out who they are, and then secondly trying to figure out what it is that's happened to them. Got it. There's, a, there's a big block of boxing company. Right in the post. There, there may be that. <laughs> yes, that Will might be something. Will we see like the sinister part of like that company? Uh, I, we can. I, I can tell you that it, it is not by accident. It, it's not just there so that that we went. Oh look, put a sign up and that'll be it. So um, yes, it's one of the reasons why we chose New Orleans is it is a city which continually has been forced to be reborn, uh, and so. When you think about Katrina, when you think about uh, the accident uh, with the uh, oil rigs, um, it, it, that's just recently. I mean, I, it, this is a city that's burned. This is a city that 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 continually is challenged through for centuries to stay alive, um, and and that's one of the themes of the show, uh, which is that these two young people are caught up in something that could be. Uh, life for Can you talk a little bit about developing Cloak and Dagger for like Freeform? Is this kind of a good bridge for kids who are a little bit too young to watch things like Jessica Jones? And well, I, look, we try to make shows that everybody finds accessible. Um, obviously, there are there is material that is a little bit uh, over skewing, um, but it, it, this absolutely was something that Marvel Television wanted to do, that we, we looked at, at our shows like Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., which we sort of refer to as our Marvel heroes. Um, those are the ones that most directly tie into what's happening in the movies. Then when we started doing the shows that appear on Netflix, but they're not limited to those characters, those are really our, our Marvel street-level heroes. Uh, they are heroes that, as we see it, are not necessarily interested in saving the universe, but maybe oftentimes are interested in saving the neighborhood or themselves. And and that, for a long time, for us a long time, it's two years, uh, was what the plan was. And we took a look at the, at the growing landscape. We realized that the, the motion picture division was going to be uh, redoing Spider-Man where uh, Tom, where Peter was a, a high school student, and we thought, how do we, in the television side, get in the young heroes business? How do we find characters that are that will speak more directly to an audience that might skew younger than the audience that we currently have? 
Um, and so we developed both uh, Runaways at Hulu and, and this uh, Cloak and Dagger uh, at uh, Freeform uh, because they were the right place for us to be. Um, I, you know, people ask us all the time, how do you decide what shows you're going to do? And oftentimes it's determined by the network that we're talking to and what's the best character. We're very lucky that so many networks want us on their network, um, but it's not always every character fits everywhere, so let's just go and do that. And, and we've also been very lucky in that, that very often it's, it's a one-stop shop. In other words, we didn't go to uh, Freeform and say, here are five different characters. We went and we said, Cloak and Dagger is something that we believe in. We believe it's right for uh, the audience that you guys are going after. Um, and to give credit where credit's due, Carrie Burke, uh, who is one of the top executives there, was someone who knew the property and aggressively went after it. And now we have a show. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.